like to, for a moment, introduce our patient who is eight months now after her procedure. And she had um, the usual severe spasm of the vagina, which is called vaginismus. And vaginismus is an uncontrolled, involuntary spasm of the vagina. This patient is a 27-year-old woman who lives locally here in Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, who uh, was referred by her obstetrician to the Elliott Hospital for physical therapy. And she was not able to progress beyond the smallest dilator. And so physical therapy referred her over here. So you came down here for your treatment and we talked about it. And you, like the patients downstairs, had the maximum spasm right at the entry muscle. So once again, this is the entry muscle right at the very beginning of the vagina. And when my patients say it's like hitting a wall, it's because that entry muscle is so spastic that you can't do anything. And even under anesthesia, when I put, do a finger examination, I actually have to get the patient down into deeper levels of anesthesia in order for that muscle to relax enough so that I can put my finger in. And so, of course, the, the treatment that I utilize is the Botox, and then I also do progressive dilation under anesthesia, and that is the idea of dilating them up and having them wake up in the recovery room with a dilator. An example, an example of uh, the use of the Botox is here's a person who has the normal frown lines, and I marked her out ahead of time to where I was planning to put the Botox injections in. And you can see two months later, you can see her squinting, and no matter how hard she tries, she can't activate these muscles. And this is what's happening in the vagina when I inject the muscles, is they can't activate them. And when you can't activate them, then they're not so tight, and then it's not so traumatic with the dilation and ultimately intercourse. And the nice thing about waking up in the recovery room with a dilator is you and my other patients are already dilating before the Botox even takes effect. How was it for you then when you woke up in the, in the recovery room I was and excited. you were excited? I'm very happy because I never thought it would be possible. I find that some of my patients, most of my patients, don't really know when the Botox is taking effect. Yes. It's very subtle because by that time they've already been dilating and the muscles are getting the muscles are getting tired. They can't squeeze anymore because they're constantly being stretched by the dilator. And so most of my patients don't notice when the Botox is effective. And how was that for you? Did, did you notice at all when the Botox was no, effective no. or you were just going through the dilation? No, we don't know the difference when the Botox starts to work. We know it works because everything becomes much easier. It becomes much easier? Yes. And what, what becomes easier? Uh, the dilation. Yes. The intercourse. Yes. Everything, tampons. Tampons, yes. Yes, you don't feel burning pain anymore. You don't see, you don't feel the resistance in the entrance. You don't the have vagina. the resistance at the entrance, yes. No. Okay. It's because you're not able to squeeze your muscles. Yes. The Botox help you relax. Yes. So everything becomes much easier. Much easier. Did you notice any difference then when you had intercourse in terms of the orgasms? Um, in terms of orgasms, um, really don't. I just feel that it's a little easy, but we don't feel difference also when the Botox come out. It's just the tone is muscular. The tone has the tone is starting to come back. Yes, yeah, come back to normal. The tone is coming back, but without the pain. Without the pain, exactly. Okay. Most of my patients don't really know when the Botox is disappearing. We know that it disappears over a span of four to six months. Sometimes, I've had some of my patients, however, tell me that there's a little bit of a difference in their orgasms because part of an orgasm is a vaginal 
contraction. And so in my pace, some of my patients, not everybody, but some of my patients have told me that they feel a difference in the vaginal contractions after the Botox, where they feel stronger contractions for, with their orgasms. Chrisley has been so wonderful counseling my other patients downstairs, and, and every time she comes in, there's just a lot of smiles downstairs in the recovery. What do you think are some of the most um, common questions that they ask you or what are some of the biggest concerns um, immediately after the treatment? They always want to know how many days after the treatment I'm able to have intercourse. Oh yes, that's, so that's the first <laughs> Yes, okay. that's the first question. They're kind of excited because after we cap in a recovery room with a bigger one, they start to get it a whole back so they know that at some point they're going to have a normal life, but oh, they want to know when. Oh, I see. Okay, so they want to know the time interval. Exactly. Okay. From the time of the treatment until you were able to achieve intercourse, how long was that? How, how much time was there between that time? My first intercourse after the treatment. Yes. Okay, it was six days after. Six days. I have the procedure done on Monday mm -hmm. and I have intercourse on Sunday. Sunday. And six days is very fast for most of my patients. I do have patients who've had intercourse five, six, seven days after the procedure. However, I would say that most of my patients have an interval of at least two weeks all the way up to two months. So, so the viewer should understand that there is a range of time that's normal, that can be fast like it was for you, or it could be slower like it is for so many of my other patients. And the important thing to understand, I think that the important thing to understand is that this is not a sprint, this is a marathon, <laughs> you know? We have to go slowly and we have to work at it and we have to dilate and, and then we can start achieving those things that we wanted to achieve. For a lot of our patients, the relationship, the marriage, or the friendship is on the verge of breaking up because of the vaginismus.